remember the star of American McGee's Alice? Then you also remember how twisted her mind was. Her parents and sister died in a fire. Driven mad with grief, Alice had to save her sanity by saving her beloved Wonderland. That Wonderland was beautifully twisted, and so it is now in Alice Madness Returns. You see, Alice still hasn't conquered her demons. Now she must piece together her past even while her shrink insists that the only way to wellness is to forget it entirely. And so you leap and fight your way through Wonderland once again, which has many surreal sights to behold. The game's main problem is that it doesn't play as good as it looks. Each section feels mostly like the last. Fortunately, the combat is there to help pick things up and keep things interesting. Yet Madness Returns is often entertaining, even if its gameplay doesn't display the creativity of the best action platformers. It helps that controlling Alice is so effortless. You can jump multiple times in midair and drift downward. Alice leaves behind a trail of leaves and flower petals, so not only does it feel graceful, it looks that way too. The majority of your time is spent jumping through Wonderland's creepy, vibrant environments. You make your way through a disturbing dollhouse and the Red Queen's nightmarish castle, among other choice venues. There's a lot of fascinating eye candy to gawk at, though the game is no technical marvel. Pop-in, bland textures, and audio glitches can be occasionally distracting. But like in the original, you still want to press ahead to see what gnarled and grotesque scenes might lie in front of you. It's too bad that the actual level layouts don't aspire to the same level of imagination. You jump from surface to surface, sometimes floating on gusts of wind, sometimes shrinking to explore hidden areas and exposed invisible platforms. But none of these elements are mixed up in unusual or interesting ways. You spend a lot of time flipping switches so that more platforms can appear so that you can then flip more switches. There are glimmers of creativity here and there, but for the most part, the platforming is all very ordinary. Luckily, the movement is so fluid that you'll still have fun, and only occasionally feel like things are stuck in a rut. You solve chessboard puzzles, play a 2D shoot 'em up, perform musical mini games, and more. It's nice to have something different to do here and there, but a lot of these detours are a little bit boring, and in the case of sequences where you roll a doll's head around, not that well executed. Combat is where the real fun is. The Vorpal Blade returns, and while you may miss the deck of cards in the blunderbuss, you now get a pepper grinder and a teapot that works sort of like a grenade launcher. Oh, and a hobby horse that you bash enemies with. Battles aren't very challenging, and the target lock can lead to some unhelpful camera angles, but this is when the game comes into its own. The enemies are freaky, mutants covered with black goo and doll's heads, teapots with eerie eyes, and other bizarre hallucinations. And because different enemies require different tactics, you need to use your entire arsenal, sometimes during the same encounter. And that helps keep things fresh, even when the level layouts threaten to bore you. Alice Madness Returns is a good length, maybe 9 hours, and if you buy new, you get an added bonus, a port of the original American McGee's Alice. The controls take some getting used to, but that game is superior to Madness Returns in one important way. It better uses the familiar characters and events from the source material, and thus, it feels more like a surreal version of Lewis Carroll's world. The sequel doesn't have the same impact, but it does prove that art design can go a long way towards keeping you involved in an otherwise mundane game. Playing Alice Madness Returns isn't as interesting as looking at it, but you'll still be glad to get lost in its eerie vision of Wonderland. It's corrupting all of Wonderland. Seeking refuge from the wicked world, perhaps things only look like they've gone to hell. You're not that good a liar, and I'm not that stupid. But something a bit less calamitous would have been welcome.